Hey, and welcome to Church for Business People. I'm so excited to see you. Can you believe it? Uh, we are right now on episode 11. I mean, this began as an experiment, as something just to see what can we do to help uh, business people, Christians, followers of Jesus from across the world who are going through uh, business in this tumultuous time of COVID-19. And what an experiment it's become. Uh, Church for Business People, thank you for, for joining our community. Thank you for being part of this uh, adventure that God is taking us through. And thank you that we can learn together. My name is Pastor M and I'm so glad to be hosting this evening. Um, you know, uh, this month, we've been going through this month of June, we're talking about uh, the uh, kingdom business basics, the nature of kingdom business. And uh, so I'm really excited, you know, uh, by the way, as you join, I'm so glad that you've been part of this. Thank you for all the comments that you keep sending. Uh, and it's exciting just to see what God is doing as we build a community of people, non-denominational, not connected to any particular church or any particular nation, but an army of people who are connected and want to change uh, this world together uh, for the kingdom. So my, uh, my name is Pastor M. Uh, hey, uh, let us know where you're checking in from. That's that's our usual drill. Just uh, check in. Just say, hey, I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Uh, tell us what estate or what city or what part of the world you're watching this uh, broadcast from. Uh, some of you are going to wa are watching right now. Many, many others are going to be watching even afterwards when this is online. Uh, and uh, even if you're watching after this, please continue to just let us know where you're from. It's so good to always see uh, where people are checking in from. Now, if you have not joined our WhatsApp community yet, uh, hit us up. There's a link below this broadcast. There's a pinned comment. And uh, just tell us where you're from. Uh, and just click, if you click that link, by the way, it's going to um, take you directly to our WhatsApp community. It's not a WhatsApp group. It's not the kind of place where you get spammed with messages, but it's a community. Uh, it's a space where you get exclusive content, uh, content that is geared to help you grow as a kingdom business person. So please uh, make sure that you join our community if you haven't yet. And we always start with worship. Uh, and the reason we do that is because we want to recognize who the king is. In kingdom business, there's a king. <laughs> and we always begin by recognizing the king. So my brother, Kanji Bogor, uh, is leading us in worship as usual. Just such, does such a great job. Uh, thank you so much, Kanji, for your service to us. Uh, let's just come before our king. I uh, love this song. When we were rehearsing it, um, we, you know, we were singing it. And it just struck me that... Um, you know, there's so many things that we need to say goodbye to and say, I'm never going back there. Because he who the Son has set free is free indeed. So whatever he's freed you from is in the past. And we need to declare that we are not going back. Whatever he's healed you from, whatever he's delivered you from is in the past. And you're not going back. And so join us as we raise this song and as we declare that we are not going back. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say I've been changed, I've been changed. Healed. Healed. Free. Free. Oh, Let's 
say that one more time. I won't go back. I won't go back. I can't go back. To So, guys, believe this, man. Uh, I mean, they are good songs, but they're more than good songs. These are declarations. They are truths that we are declaring, that we are living, that we're saying from this point on. I, I'm, that depression that God healed me from, that has been trying to find and creep back in, is a thing of the past because I'm not going back. I'm not going back. He who the Son has set free is truly free. Thank you so, so much, Kanji. Um, truly appreciate your partnership. Thank you for leading us. God is in the house tonight. Uh, the King is in residence. Uh, if you're just joining us uh, right now, uh, please uh, check in. Tell us where you're watching from. We'd love to uh, just know where you're watching from. Uh, by the way, if you uh, have any questions or con uh, co comments that you'd like to put on the comment line there, tell us anything you're thinking about. Respond to this uh, broadcast as we're talking. Uh, would love to hear from you as well. Now, uh, hey, by the way, let me just, uh, for those who are, who are just joining us, uh, there's a link below this broadcast that talks about our WhatsApp community. If you click that link, it'll give you a, uh, uh, a nice uh, place where you can connect with our WhatsApp community. And the whole idea, it's not, again, it's not a space where you get spammed with messages uh, that are from a whole community. It's actually a place where you get uh, content to help you grow as a kingdom business leader. And you know, uh, we've had such great conversations on it. Uh, if you have not joined yet, you want to, here's, let me just read a comment from Mercy, who's part of our community. Mercy says, 
this has been so deep and powerful. I'm loving every day of fellowship in this community. I believe in, I believe, I'm believing in God for a turnaround right now. And I believe his word will never be the same again as we are reading, because right now we're reading the Proverbs together uh, as a community uh, of business people. He say, uh, she says, uh, I'm always learning what wisdom is, learning to, wis- to listen and hear God by reading and walking as per his word. Thank you, Pastor M. I don't regret being here. And it's so, so good to have you, Mercy, as part of this community and so many others uh, who are part of our community. So please uh, remember to join our community. Uh, I want to just... Uh, uh, dive in we always start um, and uh, it's just it's not always I mean there's no rule around this thing uh, but we began by beginning with an interview and I always I do the little interview it's a it's a preface but it's not just a preface I think the interviews themselves I've been getting so much feedback that people are learning they want to be in front of kingdom entrepreneurs uh, people who are actually doing it and to learn from the experience so today I've got a friend of mine uh, he is his name is Edward Mugo he is the CEO of EDG and Atelier Limited and also Modular Construction And he is just a wealth of wisdom when it comes to kingdom business. Let's hear his experience. All right. Oh, it's my honor today to interview this man that I admire and somebody I really look up to. Uh, His name is uh, Edward Mugo. Uh, Welcome, Edge. Uh, Really great to have you on on Church for Business People. Thank you, Pastor Em. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, please just start by telling us about who, who, is, who is Edward Mugo. Tell us a, b- a bit about who yes. you are and what you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Edward Mugo. I'm an architect, um, a man of God, I believe. I love God. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm also an entrepreneur in, in the construction space. Um, and I'm a father of four wonderful children, ranging from 16 to 8 years. And um, husband to one, Bogore Mugo, Polish is known in the circles of writing. Yeah. Yes. And then the ears are a, awesome. a Christian trying to just go through life, I think. I love yeah. it. Uh, what, what's your company? What's your, you said you're, const- you're in construction? My, my company is EDG and Atelier, which is my architectural company. It's an architectural company formed, we've been in business for the last 22 years, over 22 years. Yeah. So we are based in Langata. We have a complement of about uh, 25 staff members. We have an office here in Langata and one in Fika. Um, right now, we, in the, this season, we basically our team is working from home. Um, we're hoping to come back, uh, but not ha- come back 100%. A few things have changed, but generally we are still continuing with business. Awesome. So that's that's what we, we do. So the that, whole that's your architectural company. That's my architectural company. And we are also a, a director and owner of a company that specializes in modular panel systems. So these are building systems that um, appeal to those who want to put up a construction quickly, efficiently, and actually uh, more cost effectively than regular build. Mm-hmm. We, we do Insta, I mean, the current offering now is Insta build, which, yeah. which means and put up a room in four days. We come and put up your room in four days, or if you want to extend a classroom for your for your homeschooling, we can put it up in four days. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. so modular group was started about 15 years ago. Okay. And we are based on Gong Road at the race course park. So we have our workshop and offices. Yeah. So Fantastic. those are run. Yeah, I love it. Uh, now, Edge, and uh, your story is that you you aren't always uh, a believer in Jesus. Uh, yes. When you started your company, you were not. And yes. so, uh, what what are some of the uh, when you became a man of faith? What are some of the challenges that you then began to face? Because you'd run your business one way, uh, yeah. and then now you became a believer, and you're telling me there were some challenges that you had to face as you were starting off because of that. Uh, and I remember okay. you talked about the fact that it was a process for you. So maybe yeah. tell us a bit about the process and the challenges that you had to face in that process. Okay, I, I think. Um... I, I was the man about town, the young professional about town, um, yeah, doing business, running an office, um, meeting people for drinks in the evening, um, looking for procurement people to have a drink with them at night and, and try and get work coming in your life. Yeah. So I remember before I got saved, three years prior to that, my wife made a commitment to pray for me. So I think with that prayer, um, I, I, it, it was never, a, it was never, a, it, mine was not a border crossing moment that one minute I was dark, then the other minute there was light. 
it yeah. was a process. I, I, I think the year before I got saved, I used to be a quite a heavy drinker. And I, I, whenever we used to drink, I used to tell my pals, we stand up and pray, even when we are tops. And we pray and <laughs> everyone goes home. The fact I was telling somebody, well, it must have worked because nobody ever got an accident after drinking with me. So, <laughs> you're, you're the pastor in the bar. <laughs> oh, the pastor in the bar. Then slowly, at one time, I remember 11 years ago in January, I, 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 I just left drinking. For two, it was initially meant to be for two months. I extended it for another two months, to four months. Then within that year, um, I think it was 20 or 20 or eight year of pounds. I, 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 I got saved. I, I, I got saved and, uh, in October. And I remember it was a gradual process. It was not a one-stop shop. Yeah. Now you are not. And as I got saved and as I, even when I got saved, as I started changing, then my business practices started changing. Mm. So one of the most, um, which, which I think is endemic to Kenya, is the fact that to get a project, everyone believes that money has to change hands. Yeah. TKK, the corruption angle, that is getting work from either government, even some corporates, private people, private companies, their procurement departments are not what they should be. They, they ask for commissions and bribes for to give out work. Yeah. So that is the truth. That the, the truth of matter. So what changed for me is now that process of now understanding that cannot continue. So that has did impact my business because we left pushing for work in certain circles, government circles. I stopped pushing for work there in certain circles simply because there's no point of pushing for work and you know they are going to demand this commission from you and you are unable to do it. So yeah, yeah so so that that you asked what what changed significantly. I think that was a change. Yeah. The, the change significant was that that you are we are not just able to do everything to get work yeah. we were now we were now very focused that we are not going to corrupt we are not going to bribe, and it means we walk away from uh, a potential project then so be it wow yeah what what the, were the, there times that were there maybe a couple of experiences that you actually lost work because of your new convictions yeah certainly certainly i do remember one especially for modular my 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 construction business then with a project we had gone very far we had actually gone through all the stages of being better and it was a, a private company actually based in Westlands, an international private company based in Westlands. Then at the last step, um, uh, the procurement people sent the person who was pushing for us. And they told them, now we need to come and discuss our, our, our deal, the commercials, or what is in it for us. Mm. So I told them, that, uh, there's nothing for you because it's a job. You've seen what you can do. We can deliver for you and we'll deliver in good time and good quality. And it became an issue because we actually did not get a job. The job was snatched from the jaws of our... It's a job we were almost starting, say, on a Monday and we on a Thursday, and they, they never gave it to us. Wow. wow. They never gave it to us. They just got a reason or other. Our accounts are faulty. Your accounts are not detailed enough. And uh, you know how it goes with, with, the, with the... It was actually an NGO. It just... The project just disappeared. And this is a job you were certain you were going to get. At the, it was ours. We had confirmed it's ours. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. So this but, person then says your company has problems with financials, has issues. Yeah, and it makes it. Yes. A, it's about you now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you see, probably what I've learned is that if we had gone ahead and taken it, it would not have ended well. It would probably not have ended well. So some things we might think the we are the Lord is stopping us from getting them because. He doesn't like us or he's not working for us but yeah. probably he stopped you from total failure later on or getting messed up getting serious losses can you imagine if i pumped in four or five million into that project and 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 my money is stuck there for two three years yeah yeah or i mean I, I know you, yeah. i know you've, you've you've even told me that there, there, there's times you've had to walk away from payment on work you've already done because somebody yes. wanted to, a bribe to, for you to get paid. Yes, even right now we are still owed money by some organizations, government organizations, and we 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 just simply did not agree to go the way they were going. 
Yeah. Now, I mean, yeah. you know, I'm hearing you speak and I'm thinking there's somebody watching this who's thinking, I want to be a kingdom entrepreneur. There's a cost because you're saying there's a yeah. cost, you know, I mean, it's painful because yeah. you're thinking you are probably used to getting this money easily. You just yeah. need to give in an envelope. You got the yeah. cash. So this person yeah. is thinking, my goodness, what keeps you going? I mean, what makes you when you know that actually you're not going to get the jobs that you are used to getting the easy jobs? Yeah. Uh, how would you encourage a person like that? Well, I think it's very easy. I think what you discover is that you get a lot more work that, that you probably never have gotten. The, and you find you're getting calls from nowhere. People are telling you, oh, I saw your name on the internet. Yeah. Oh, I was told your name by so-and-so. You, somebody in charge gave you a name and you get a big job. So there's also on the contrary to that, the contrary to that is that there's a lot of work that you're going to get through prayer that you probably would never have seen. Wow. And that has been true in my life. We yeah. have grown since I got saved. The company has grown. We've gotten bigger jobs. We've not gone negative. We've not. Uh, we've not become smaller. We've grown bigger. Yeah. So, so how, how would we have gotten bigger if we're not getting bigger jobs? And, so, and, and, so what you're saying is there's a there's a there's a cost, but there's also yes. a benefit on the other side. Something on the other side also comes through. I, I mean, the reality is somebody could end up closing their business because they just are not able to survive. Agreed. Agree in the in the short term. In the short term, it could be the Lord wants you to leave some practices. He probably even wants you to leave some clients. Mm. Mm. But mm. I, what I've learned over my period is that, and even that has not come to me. It didn't come to these things that didn't come to me in a flash. After getting saved, the next day I had this information I have now. Yeah, it's been it's been a growth for many years. It's been a growth for over ten years yeah. that I know now that when the Lord does wants you out of a space please do yourself a favor and leave that space quickly wow. because he's already prepared something else for you yeah. and that other thing will not start coming in if you are still sticking to this space i love it i love it yeah if you stick to this space where he wants you out and you will know the lord wants you out when things don't work out things uh, when the doors start getting closed for you you're trying to do this it's closed the Lord doesn't. They, he said to you, your heart will tell you. Now, I want us to come back to this. We're going to have part yeah. two of this interview because we're, you've got yeah. some great stories about how yeah. God has answered prayers and shown you yeah. divine ideas. Uh, yes. Doors that were closed actually were God opening a different door. So I really yeah. want us to talk about that because this whole concept of how you can transition yeah. from yeah. being doing business the world's way and start doing it the kingdom yes. way. I think you yes. have some great lessons that you can teach us. If somebody wanted to find out more about EDG and Atelier, yeah. uh, we're, yeah. we're going to just tell us the website or where we go to get or, yeah, or, yeah modular, which, whichever, whichever one. Just the, web, the website is edgatelier.com, uh, which is our main website for EDG. And and uh, all we are on uh, Facebook, we are on uh, all social media, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, all those handles. I think you you you'll print them there for people to see. Yeah. And and we are we are we are active in social media. For modular, you can come to modular group. You can go to instabuilt.com. Those are uh, you can get all the information you need from modular. The, 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 and we welcome you. If you have any query, please shoot us an email. Shoot us uh, a query on uh, Facebook on any subject. We'll be happy to. Yeah, it's not been an easy run, but it's been a fantastic run. I wouldn't do it any other way. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Well, thank you, Edge. We can't wait for next week for part two of this interview. Uh, God yes. bless you and thank you so much. Asante, Sandra. God bless and thank you for having me. Hey, uh, wow, what a great interview. I mean, Edge is a great guy. I know you've enjoyed uh, hearing his story. I love learning from others and the Proverbs is just full of wisdom about learning from the experience of others. And uh, Edge is, uh, or Edward Mugo, as uh, many know him, uh, he, he is uh, just a guy who's seeking to walk with the Lord in his business, as I know many of you are. And uh, just great to hear his story. Next week, we're going to hear part two of that story where he talks not just about, he, he's talked about the challenges, but now he's going to be talking about some of the things God has done for him. Uh, some of the things that the, the revelations God has brought to him as he sought to follow him as a kingdom entrepreneur. Yes, 
kingdom. Yes, God and business, they're one and the same. You don't separate those two things. Uh, you don't do business uh, during the week and then on Sunday you do something different. It's one and the same. It's worship through your business. And that's one of the things I'm excited about learning at Church for Business People. So this month we'll be talking about the nature of a kingdom business. And we began to talk, talk by just talking about who a kingdom entrepreneur is supposed to be. We talked about the fact that we have uh, that our anatomy, we're created... <laughs> as part of God's divine nature. He's put his image in us. And what does that mean? It's because, why did he do that? It's to accomplish his assignment. We all have an assignment. And that assignment is as his ambassadors to bring about God's nature, God's influence on the earth. That's what your kingdom business is meant to do, by the way. It's supposed to represent God. It's supposed to bring his influence to the earth. And not only that, we learned that we have uh, not just anatomy, our assignment, but we also learned that we have authority that God has actually delegated authority to us as human beings and that there are things God will not do on earth without the invitation of a human being. And that's where our prayer comes in. That's how we begin to learn how to pray for our kingdom business because we have authority. Uh, the things we're doing, we're doing because God has said, you're the one I've delegated uh, this to do. And we talked about it last week. Why is it that many Christian businesses are not running with authority? Why is it that so many kingdom entrepreneurs are hustling just like everyone else? And we talked about three main reasons. If you remember, we talked about ignorance. That we've forgotten our identity. We've forgotten who we are. That many of us are just at the place where we think that salvation is a ticket, a fire uh, insurance ticket, uh, something to save us from hell and take us to heaven. But we forget that God did not save us just to wait for heaven, but God saved us to rule on the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, rule over every living creature that I've put you in charge of. And so that's one of the things we're ignorant about what, what, what faith is. What following Jesus really means. But number two is our rebellion. That we don't want to do it God's way, we want to do it our way. Uh, we choose to do it our way. And that's what Adam and Eve did in the garden. And, then, and, and it's often driven by number three, which is fear. That we have fear of failure, fear of poverty, uh, fear of disappointing others, fear of disappointing ourselves, and so on. So many fears that keep us from being the person God created us to be. And then we say that, you know, the way to break out of this fear, the way to break out of this rebellion, the way to break out of this ignorance is one key. It's like the key into entering the kingdom, into, into living the life of the kingdom that God did, uh, de um, designed you for. And that key is surrender. That little word, surrender. Today I want to talk a bit about that. Uh, I don't want to rush too quickly on this. When th this stuff we're talking about is really the essence. We're in the essence of kingdom business. And some of you, you may want to read a, a, a book. Uh, you may want to be reading uh, uh, business leading books. You want solutions. You want, what do I do right now in my business? But you know what? Sometimes the what, uh, uh, the, sorry, the, the how, those, those how to's really need to come out of the big why. If you don't understand the big why, why did God put me in charge of this business? The what's, it's like you're moving very fast and you're moving faster and faster, but you're going in the wrong direction. So it's, it's important to stop. And maybe that's what COVID-19 does for us. It's a time to recalibrate, to stop and to ask, where was I heading? Is that where I was designed to be heading? Is this what I want to give my life to? Is this what my business should be about? I know at this point, yes, there's, there's stuff about I'm, I'm, think, I'm struggling in my business. I'm worrying about letting go people. And I, I understand. I really completely understand that this is a tough time for all of us. But I think we owe it to ourselves to ask ourselves, why am I in this thing? So what is surrender? What is surrender? Surrender is a very strange paradigm because the world doesn't talk about surrender. The world talks about winning. That's really what uh, the business world is all about. Surrender feels like losing. It feels like being last. It feels like somebody else wins. It's like when somebody puts a, hand, a, a gun to your head and you put up your hands and you say, surrender. That's what surrender is. And you know, we're not taught to surrender. I mean, even the business books we read, one of the books that I read in business is called Winning uh, by Jack Welch. It's on my shelf. And he talks about how business, what success in business really is, is to be number one or number two in whatever field of business that you're supposed to be in. In other words, you dominate. So business, I mean, the way we know it is, it's about being, it's about dominating. It's about winning. So when you start talking about surrender, being a strategy for business, what in the world could you be talking about? Now, let me just talk about why surrender. Why for us as kingdom business people, we think different. Why we go different when the world is going one way, we go a different way. I'll tell you why this thing is so important and I'll give you three reasons. Number one, we all surrender to something. We all surrender to something. Everyone eventually surrenders to something, whether they're aware of it or not. Every, if you don't surrender to God, by the way, you're going to surrender to opinions or expectations of others. You're going to surrender to money so that you become a money-driven business. 
you're going to surrender to, to resentment and proving to your dad or to whoever it is that you're trying to prove to that you can succeed. You're going to surrender to fear so that it becomes a fear-driven business. Um, uh, there's so many business people who are just driven by fear. It's like I wake up every morning, I have to run and hustle because I don't want to fall behind. Uh, what a terrible motivator. Uh, um, or it's our pride that we are surrendered to, or it's our lust or our ego. I mean, you name it, there's so many things that people are surrendered to today. And so we are all designed to worship something. We're all designed to surrender to something. If your business is not a God-driven business, it will be a something-driven business. It will be a self-driven business and the self is always driven by hidden and inner motivations. So if you don't fail, if you fail to worship God, you will, fail, you will worship other things. If you fail to surrender to God, you will surrender to other things. And the thing is, uh, I think Rick Warren is one who said, you're free to choose what you surrender to, but you're not free from the consequence of that choice. That many of these other things, they have they have. There's, there's, there's loads attached to them. So you're going to surrender to something. So you need to ask yourself, what do, what do I want to drive me? Uh, what, and what's currently driving me right now in my business? But the other thing, the other reason why surrender to God is so important, and this thing, by the way, it's so critical for us to understand as kingdom entrepreneurs, that the alternative to surrender to God is dependence on self. The alternative to surrender to God is dependence on self. If I'm a kingdom entrepreneur and I'm, 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 I'm at the place where I'm feeling, you know, I can't really surrender to God. What, are, what am I doing? I'm missing out on the opportunity of tapping into the greatest power of the universe to run this business. And I'm depending on myself, my puny limited power to run this business. You know, there's this whole sense where I think it's up to me. It all depends on me. I must be the one to run it. And so many people carry the world on their shoulders. Business people, it's like, if I don't hustle, if I don't go out uh, and meet people at night, if I don't do the things that I have to do, and so what do you do? I'm neglecting my health, neglecting my family, neglecting all these things. Why? Because I have to be the one who's carrying this. It's like Atlas carrying the world on my shoulder. But you know, here's the thing. I've come to learn that I can either carry this on my shoulder and rip up my life as I do, I can actually surrender to the one who actually has the power to carry it and to say, Lord, you hold my business in your hands. You hold my life in your hands. And here's the thing. Jesus said, my, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. And many times what we're doing is we're stressing ourselves, carrying burdens that are not ours, as opposed to surrendering them to God. Proverbs, there's this verse I found in the Proverbs. It was actually an interesting one because I read it and then I read it two chapters later. I thought, did they repeat it? Did something go wrong? Is it a typo? And it's actually the same verse, the exact same words. Proverbs 14, 12, it's the same one that's in Proverbs 16, 25. Solomon obviously thought it was important enough that he just copied the same verse and wrote it twice. It says, there's a path before each person that seems right, but in the end, it leads to death. It leads to death. When, you, when I choose to surrender, to, to lead myself, to depend on myself, it will lead to death. It will destroy. And many of you, I know you can testify, there's been a season in your life, perhaps even now, when your marriage is not what it should be. When your, your relationships are not what they should be. Your, dependent, your relationship with God is not what it should be. Why? Because your business just is so intense, it's taking everything away from you. And that's what it will do unless you surrender it. Now, the third, the, the third reason why for me I've come to understand surrender is such a critical thing is that surrender is, and this is connected, surrender is a prerequisite to living a life of divine power. Surrender is a prerequisite to living a life of divine power. Um, you know, there's this, um, this time when, when, when Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, talked about his weakness and how he was weak. He's one of the most surrendered people in the, in, the, in the scriptures. And then he says, in my weakness, he is strong. And so I rejoice in my weakness because he is strong. And I've come to understand that the more I relax, the more I release, the more I'm actually able to enjoy my life. It's like swimming. I mean, I'm one of those guys, unlike some of you who are fishes, born little fishes, swimming as little toddlers. I learned to swim as an adult. Uh, and a big reason is, I don't know if my bro is watching this, my younger brother, uh, he learned to swim before me. And I was such a competitive freak that if my brother learned something before me, I didn't want to learn it. That, I've never said this publicly. So if you're listening, this is why I learned to swim as an adult. But <laughs> here's the thing. I, I discovered that when you're swimming and you're learning, the more you struggle, the more you stress, the more you push, the harder you work and the less effective you are. 
I don't know if you've discovered that. Uh, any of you who's learned to swim, if you learned as a kid, you don't even understand this illustration. But any of you who's learned to swim as an adult, you understand that. That what you have, eventually you have to do is you learn, I'm just going to relax and let the water do its job. And then you actually start to enjoy being in the water. It's the same with business. That when I relax and let the Holy Spirit do his job, when I stop stressing, it's not, I'm not saying become lazy. <laughs> there's another business, business, there's another thing that's going to engage my time now is seeking the master. It's hearing his voice. It's understanding what he's talking about. Uh, that's what I, I'm going to do that. And then doing what he asks me to do. When I change that focus, what happens is now I, I actually relax and I begin to enjoy life. And this is a, it's, it's so counterintuitive. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. He will make your path straight. My goodness, when you get that thing, um, you'll be amazed. I mean, I remember just thinking when people would talk like this, I'd be like, this guy is talking mumbo jumbo. What? This doesn't even make sense. But I can tell you that this is how the kingdom of God works. This is how the kingdom of God works. I mean, it's like if you've ever eaten a mango, I forgot to bring my mango seed. I was supposed to bring a mango seed illustration, but I think mangoes are out of season. I should have brought an avocado or something. But anyway, if you, if you look at a seed, whenever you hold a seed up, you'll always find that that seed is full of potential. Within that one seed is a forest. <laughs> Just that one seed could actually result in a forest. It has that much potential. But that seed, for it to become a forest, it has to be willing to stop being a seed. It has to give up its nature. Something has, it has to surrender to something bigger than itself. And Jesus said it in uh, John 12 verse 24. He says, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many fruits. And what he's saying, he was saying to his disciples, he said, if you want to live the kind of life I've intended for you, if you want to live that productive life, uh, exciting, vibrant life, that life of results, that life where money doesn't control you, that life where stress is not your option, it's not your portion, <laughs> then this whole thing, by the way, my goodness, we have messed this up in church because we teach you that all you have to do is tithe and give money and then this blessings will fall on you after you. It doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say that at all. It says Matthew 16, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will follow after you. You won't have to run after them. And that's, again, the paradox of the kingdom. If you're a swimmer talking to somebody who has never swum before and you're telling them, just relax, they look at you and thinking, are you mad? And, 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 and that's why for me, I really believe it's important for me to bring business kingdom entrepreneurs on this show who are actually doing it. So you can actually see it's, they're not, this, this word's actually, it, it happens. People are actually able to live fruitful, enjoyable, productive lives and make lots of money in the process, and they're not held by that money. It doesn't even change their heart. Why? Because they've learned that these things follow when you seek the master's will. I remember the first time I stumbled onto this truth was um, as a young man, and I'm so grateful I learned this uh, in, in my youth. Uh, I, was, I, was, I must have been about 22. I went on a, sh on a trip. I was working at Nairobi Chapel as an intern uh, under Pastor Oscar and uh, Bishop Oscar. And then I, I, he sent us on a mission trip to Garissa. I'd never been to Garissa uh, Went with my girlfriend then, who was who who's now my wife, uh, my sweetheart Carol, and we went to um, to a mission station. We we stayed with some missionaries uh, there, and one of the things that this guy has taught us is the value of surrender. And I remember one day we had to take a whole day to fast and pray. I'd never fasted uh, um, even for an hour, and it was like a whole day of fasting and prayer, and just write down all the things that you're holding on to that will keep you from serving God. Anything that God asked you to give up that you would struggle to give up. Just give it up. And uh, so they make a list and then just give it up. And I remember just thinking, why would I take a whole day? I was 22, man. What do you own at 22? You've just got a few nice clothes and, and your reputation. And that's, I mean, I thought there's nothing I own. I'll probably take an hour and then I'll skive this place and go out and see what the town of Garissa has for me. Uh, but you know, it was so weird. I always tell this story and I, I still get chills when I think about it. It's like I started writing down and I began to list all the things that I was, all the things that I had, all the things that I was living for. It's like the Holy Spirit just helped bring, mind, bring to mind all the things that were important to me. And I realized there's a whole bunch of things that I was holding on to that if God was to ask me for, I would say, not on your life. I, this, this one, I can't trust you with God. And as I wrote those things, then I began to, I, I listed them out. I said, easiest to the, to the hardest, the one that is easiest to give up to the hardest. And then I just began in prayer to pray, Lord, okay, 
I give this up to you. If you ask me for this, it's now yours. From this day forward, I don't own it. If you tell me to give it away, I'll give it away. Um, it's yours. My goodness, uh, at some point, I don't even know what point, I started crying. I just was weeping as I did this because it was so painful, but I just couldn't stop. I just really felt compelled to do this. And it was things like my ambition to be wealthy and rich, my, my ambition to study and do a master's degree and become educated. And I thought, my God, I could end up becoming one of those broke guys you hear about who never went to school. Uh, my ambition to, I mean, it was just one thing after the other. But the funny thing is, as I was just praying over my last one, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, we've been looking all over for you. It was actually 6 p.m. I'd spent a whole day uh, surrendering the stuff I owned. I left that room. I felt the poorest I'd ever felt in my life. But simultaneously, I, I was the freest I'd ever been because I knew from that day forward, I don't own a thing. God owns it all. He's the manager. In fact, the way I put it is he owns, I manage. He's the owner. I'm the manager. You know what? It's given me so much freedom over my life. My wife can testify, uh, Carol, if you ask her, because I don't own anything. I don't own the clothes I wear. The, if God tells me give it, I just take it and I give it. And you know what has happened then is we've begun to understand that God's economy is not limited to the economy of this world. God doesn't operate with economic rules the way the world does. A lot of the things we own, we don't own because we were so smart. Yes, we worked. And yes, we've tried to be thrifty and wise and good investors. And I can teach, I teach people about that. But some of the things that we own right now, the biggest things we own have come to us through divine ideas and through divine connections and things that we could never take credit for. And this is what I mean by surrender that I let go and I let God run my business. And it becomes his business. And that's when it becomes a kingdom business. Now listen, there is no such thing as partial surrender. You know, we preach as often, we shortchange people because we tell you all you have to do is just pray a prayer of surrender. Uh, then once you're saved, go ahead with your plans as you wait for heaven. Just pray and tithe and come to church regularly and serve in a ministry and, and you're good. But that's, that's partial surrender. And I, I remember one person who said, uh, Jesus will either be Lord of all, or he will not be Lord at all. There are many Christians who are walking around calling themselves Christians, but a Christian by name, because a real Christian, what a real Christian is meant to be, that word is meant to be a follower of Jesus, a person who follows Jesus in every way, a person who's completely surrendered to his teacher. And that's what, that's what that really means. And that's what I discovered at 22 years old when I went on that trip uh, to Garissa. That's a, it's a secret of kingdom effectiveness. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect, there are many times I let go and I, I, I start becoming, I'm like, let's get practical here. <laughs> I mean, I need to step in and to, to sort things out for myself. But you know what? The driver of godly leaders across the ages, the thing that distinguished the people who made a huge impact for the kingdom, not just in Bible days, but today still, is <laughs> understanding the secret of surrender. The, the greatness of a kingdom leader's power is the measure of their surrender. Uh, how surrendered are you? How surrendered is your business to the king and to his business, uh, to his reason? I, I mean, I always laugh about uh, Jesus himself. He expected people to be surrendered. Uh, he, he sent his disciples to a, to a guy and said, give me your donkey. I'm going to ride it today. And the guy, without asking questions, is like, boom, it's gone. <laughs> That's a kingdom businessman. He's like, what does a master want? It's his. Jesus himself was under authority. He says in John 6, 38, for I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Jesus was here to model to us how we should live as human beings. He was here to show us who God is, but he was also supposed to show us who we are, who we are supposed to be in response to God. And he models that beautifully. He says, I'm not here to do my will. I'm here to do the will of the one who sent me. That's, that's what every kingdom business person should aspire to. Uh, Galatians 2.20 says, uh, this is Paul, one of his uh, most passionate uh, and influential followers. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. What does that mean? Even for Paul, he's like, I don't have an agenda. It's God's agenda. What does that mean? I wake up in the morning and I'm asking God, what do you want to achieve today in your business? And I listen. I actually take time. I, I read his word. And when I see, and by the way, here's the thing. Some of you are reading through the Proverbs. This Proverbs challenge is not just for you to list and say, okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. This is interesting. That's not how we read the Bible. Uh, the Bible is not a novel. It's for you to underline it as you're reading it and to be able to say, this is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm hearing. And then what I normally do is after I've underlined, I'll come back again and ask, are there things there that, I, that God could be speaking to me? Are there some sins he's pointing out that I'm seeing in my life? Are there some promises that he has put there that I need to be claiming and saying, Jesus, over the situation in the business right now, I'm going to pray this scripture. 
are there some errors that he's pointing out that I'm making, I'm about to make through that scripture? And I'm like, okay, underline, I'm not going to do this. Are there some examples he wants me to follow? Uh, are there some people who, who I'm looking at and I'm saying, my goodness, look at how this person did this. How could God be asking me to speak to my staff today? Are there some, some, so for me, when I read the scripture, it's alive every morning. It's alive because I'm listening to my king so he can direct me for the business. And it's like, God, what do you want me to do? When there's a tender to be, to be submitted, God, uh, how do you want me to surrender, to, uh, to submit this? And then praying over it as an office and saying, Lord, we trust you with this decision. That's kingdom business. It's business that is driven by the king for the agenda of the kingdom. My goodness, I could preach about this forever and I don't really want to. So I'm going to stop right here. But I want to, I just want to, let me just say this. I can't overemphasize this lesson enough. Unless you die to self, you will never truly live. This is what every kingdom business person across the ages has come to understand. That unless this business becomes fully God's business, then I will not enjoy it. I will not be who I was meant to be. So I want to close. And uh, next week, we're going to continue with that incredible interview. Uh, I want to just hear uh, uh, my brother Edge talk about some of the, the divine provisions he's seen in his business, some of the ways God has just engaged and in intervened. Uh, and we're going to continue with these. Uh, please join our community. Join our community because uh, we're going to continue with these stories. And in our community, we do. It's not just church for business people, but there are other forums and other things that are for that community. And so if you are interested in just being a part of that, if you're, if you're in business or want to be in business and you want to learn together with other people who are passionate about Jesus, then join this community and we'd love to walk uh, this journey with you. But for now, I want to pray for you. Uh, and I, I, I want to leave you with this. Uh, are there things that God is asking you to die to right now in your business? Are there, and in your life as well, because it starts with your life and then it goes into your business. So are there, what about, what about you and your reputation, who you are, that if God asked you to die to, you would struggle with right now? What possessions do you have? What owners, what things do you own right now that God, if he asked you to give up, you would really struggle with? right now uh, what connections what relationships do you have that define you right now that you'd struggle to give up if God asked for so so these are things maybe maybe as I leave you this is a challenge I want to put to you don't wait for one day when you feel convicted make a list like I did take take a few hours and just do a list of all the things that you're holding on to right now that if God asks you to give up to you're like God uh, and write that list and then just one by one release those things release them to the king release them to the king allow him to be the one that is fully in charge i'm going to pray for us and i want to pray for us from proverbs chapter 17 verse 3 which is a scripture from today uh, and it says in the same way that god and gold and silver are refined by fire the lord purifies your heart by tests and trials of life some of you are going through tests and trials in your business right now and i just sense that the lord would have me uh, pray for you as we conclude let's pray father thank you for your people thank you for every kingdom entrepreneur who is in this forum who's being challenged by this forum who is growing through this forum uh, who's going through even an uncomfortable time right now i pray that lord you would continue to just help us to be who you want us to be. I pray especially for any person right now who's going through a trial, who's going through a test in their business, in their life, economic, uh, relational, whatever it is, uh, even health. And I pray that Lord, even as we weather, as they weather this storm, as they walk through this journey, that Lord Jesus, you would allow them to be patient with you, to trust in you. Your word says gold and silver are refined by fire. I pray that, Lord, whatever they are going through will not break them, but it will make them better. It will make them who you want them to be. So I speak over you, God's son, over you, God's daughter. May this season strengthen you. May it encourage you. May it give you everything that God wants you to have, that you may become the son or daughter that he created you to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so God bless you. Next week we continue. Nature of Kingdom Business, but now we're getting into some of the more practical stuff. Can't wait to see you there. God bless. God bless.